One of the very first chord changes that I was able to instantly recognize upon hearing it was the minor plagal chord change. And that's what we're going to talk about today. What is it? How to use it? How do we apply it? And all sorts of good stuff like that. It's a really cool chord change. You're going to hear it uh, quite often in popular music, all sorts of different genres. And once you get a grasp of how to form it, uh, you can apply it anywhere you need. So I think it's a very good place to start if you're getting into songwriting and music theory. Uh, essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to start off uh, by doing a quick recap on diatonic chords, if you're not familiar with it. I'm going to blast through some basic concepts here, and then we're going to go straight into uh, the actual minor plagal change and how to use it. And then I'll show you a few examples of it in popular music, and I'll give you a few final thoughts on the theory behind it and uh, what you can do to accommodate something like a minor, pl minor plagal change. Okay, so uh, for starters, let's talk about diatonic chords. Those are chords within a key, and uh, essentially all we need to do is we need to know a major scale. We are going to do, let's do A major today. Seven notes of A major, and then the eighth note is the octave. And here's the deal with diatonic chords, is that every one of those notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, every one of those notes, I'm going to assign it its own chord. Okay? So the first note, it's going to get a chord. The second note, it's going to get a chord. Third note, you get a chord, you get a chord. They all get chords, all right? And if you see, um, we write these numbers, not as just numbers, but we write them as Roman numerals, all right? And some of those Roman numerals will be uppercase, and some of those Roman numerals will be lowercase. And that just tells you what kind of chord that number is going to get. So, for example, the first note is an uppercase numeral. That means that first note will get its own major chord, A major. The second note is a lowercase numeral. That means that that note would get its own minor chord, B minor, and so forth and so forth, all right? What we need, though, is the fourth note. That's what this is all going to be about, all right? So let's go to our first note, um, which is uh, the first finger, all right, on fifth fret. And like I said, we're in A today. So if I want to find out the first chord and the fourth chord, here's what I would do. The first note is obviously A, all right, and it gets a major chord. So there's my one chord. That's pretty easy. But the fourth note, let's count up to it. One, two, three, four. That note right there is D. We're going to give it a major chord. And that would be the actual four chord, and it would resolve to the one chord. Now this change, going from four to one, that's called a plagal cadence, or an amen cadence you might hear it uh, referred to as. Four, 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 one. It's a very nice, soft little resolution right there. Um, and you hear it all over the place. It's not too special, and it's very common. But what's a little more unique, and that's what we're getting into, is the minor plagal. And that means instead of making it a major four chord, we're going to leave the key, and we're going to make it a minor four chord. And that will resolve to my one chord. All right, and you hear that change, that wistful minor four to one? It's very, very nice, and that is the minor plagal change. So essentially, all you have to do is find a note of your key, all right? Like I said, we're in A. There's your one chord. Go up four notes, one, two, three, four, and make it a minor chord. And there's your minor four to your major one, and there's your minor plagal change. Now, what's more common is to hear uh, a major four chord first then the minor four chord, and then the one chord. And that sounds like this. So I'm in the key of A. Here's my four chord right here. Here's my minor four chord. And then I'm back to my one chord. All right. So that's A major, D major, D minor, and then back to A major. All right, now we're starting to get into the love song, depressing, you know, heart-pulling uh, chord change that we hear a little bit more frequently, all right? Um, I really, really like that change, and uh, I think you can see how easy it is to apply this in different places, right? So right there, I was in the key of uh, A. If I wanted to do this in the key of C, let's just start on C, all right, and play my major scale. And all I have to do is start on my first note and give it a major chord. Go to your fourth note, and we'll do the major four chord. That's that, uh, that chord shape right there, and then we'll do a minor shape on the same note, and then back to one. So in the key of C, we have C major, we have F major, we have F minor, and then we're back to C major. And once you know the names of the chords, you're free to, you know, move it into an open position, uh, you know, doing C major down here instead, and then F major here, and then F minor, and then back to C. All right? Really, really nice change. Now, um, I want you to be able to identify the emotional content of this chord change. It's very important to be able to know what it feels like. Not to know what it looks like and, you know, sounds like. It, I mean, that's important, too. But really, knowing what it feels like means you don't have to work when you're hearing and you're, when you're composing. I mean, for example, if you look at a stop sign, you don't have to calculate that it's a stop sign. You're not saying, oh, it's red, it's, you know, an octagon, it's got the white letters, oh, it says S-T-O-P. You just instantly identify a stop sign as a stop sign. And in music, you can get the same sort of familiarity with different musical concepts. When I hear a minor plagal change like this, I'm not calculating scale degrees and thinking, oh, I think I hear the fourth degree. And I think, oh, I th it's, 
it's more of just a, I recognize it immediately now because I've played with it so many times. I've composed with it. I've learned so many songs where it occurs, and it's just recognizable to me now. That's not something I was born with. That was something that I developed. And trust me, if I can do it, then you can do it too. But it really comes down to exposing yourself to these kinds of concepts and really playing with them, writing with them, memorizing them, and labeling them. It all helps make them more familiar concepts. Okay? So uh, now that we've gotten out of the way, what is the minor plagal? I want to show you a few examples of where we're actually going to hear it in popular music. Um, oh, let's start off with R. Kelly. All right? Uh, I Believe I Can Fly. <laughs> Also in uh, In My Life by the Beatles, in the verse section, we go from a major four to a minor four to a one. Once again, in Creep by uh, Radiohead, we've got the verse section, which is just, uh, you know, ends with a major four to a minor four to a one. So like I said, I think it's got a pretty distinct feel, and I think really what comes down to is that that four chord, let's say we're back in the key of A, um, I think that four chord, when you're on a major four chord, it's very normal and very uh, optimistic. One, four. So you expect something happy, but then you let them down with that minor four to get back to the one. And I think that's where a lot of the tension here comes from, is that you're expecting something and you don't get it. And then by the time you're back at the one chord, you still kind of have that bittersweet taste in your mouth. You're not, it's not completely gone. You still have the memory of that sadness on the four chord to get back to one. All right. So uh, I, I, you know, I encourage you to think as many ways to interpret that emotionally and think of as many ways to memorize it as you can. Use different songs as examples and uh, definitely play with it in different inversions on your guitar. Last but not least, let's talk a little bit about the theory here. You can think of this minor four chord as being borrowed from the parallel minor scale. So, um, if, for example, in the key of A major, um, my four chord is D major. But in the key of A minor, my four chord is D minor. So we can think that we just borrowed that four chord from A minor instead. Um, which means if I wanted to sing on top of that or play notes on top of this, I would probably pick notes from the A minor scale. That's the parallel minor scale. All right. Uh, there's also uh, a natural minor four to major one progression in uh, the key of mixolydian flat six or the fifth mode of melodic minor so you could actually stay in one key by using these two chord changes and you'd see some pretty uh you'd get some pretty cool progressive sounding uh modal stuff going there all right so i mean i hope this gets you started in songwriting this is how i think about writing songs and there's a million ways to do it um but i think this is just one tool is you know kind of identifying chord changes memorizing them becoming familiar with them and then when you're actually composing you want to make somebody you know really wistful and heartfelt and you know heartbroken then you can grab in this minor plague and see what happens all right so i hope this video helped you out if you have any questions or comments please leave me uh, a comment down below or get a hold of me on Twitter or Facebook or send me an email and uh, I'll see if I can answer any questions you might have on these topics. All right. Thanks for watching.